Hello everyone, I'm Esperanza Walsh and this is Art from the Heart of St. Augustine's Church and uh, we are still doing our sessions remotely because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, uh, today's subject uh, is this beautiful scenery in Devon. Uh, yes, as you can see, there are marks on the page which we use the same printout uh, of a photograph we've taken uh, when we were in Devon uh, for my class previously. And um, we are going to do our impressionist version of this art piece um, for the session. Now, I do have a pre-prepared uh, sketch, which has the simple shapes uh, in it. And I will guide you through on how to create this sketch of this landscape. Okay, let's start. Okay, the first thing uh, that we are doing, okay, would be to get an approximate, uh, get the approximate position of the things in the art piece. Okay, so in my estimation, this is approximately a third of the page. This is another third and this is another third. So we shall do it that way and divide the page into three portions. So one is here and then the second is here and the third is here. So one, two, three. So uh, relatively one third. And then I will divide it in the middle, which is this. So I drew a line here. Now for the top, the line here would denote this um, uh, area with the mountains and the trees. So we don't need to do anything on this line. So we just leave it as this. And then later on, we continue painting and uh, use it as so yes, part of our sketch. Now for the rest of the guidelines, uh, we would need to do uh, other things. Like for example, uh, this bit over here. So let me get another pen. This bit over here, which curves downwards. Okay, so we have this one curving downward in that shape, it stops a, pro a little bit more than a third of this part of the page. Here, it doesn't start at the corner, but slightly lower. And it's a curved line. It's not straight, it's curved. And if I show you that using this, okay, as you can see, it curves that way. So it's a sort of a shallow curve. Now, the next bit is this uh, curve on the other side. So this one starts here at the corner intersecting with the guideline here, and then ends at about a third of this part over here. So we just draw the line here. Again, it's a curved line. And that's coming from here, along this line, along this line and then up to there. So we've uh, almost finished the drawing. Now, the only bit that we have to do would be the road before we can start painting. And for the road, it's actually quite easy because here we have a slanted line, short slanted line, a small curve, a very short slanted line, a large, slightly larger curve, and then when it touches this line, we end the drawing there. So that's that part of the road. So it ends there. It's just slanted line, curve, slanted curve, and then slightly, uh, a very short slanted line until it touches this line. Then that part is good. Now on this side, it's very similar, but along the other way. So opposite direction, slanted line, um, short, uh, it's a large curve. The, I would say the radius is a bit large, but it's a short part, a smaller part of that circle. So it's a short curve. And then here, a straight line, really short. And then here, another curved line, which is approximately the same as this. But then uh, the tip here is not parallel to this one. So it touches this line at some point as well. 
So after drawing that, we have something like this. Something like this, but without the bottom part. So now to create this uh, part at the bottom, this part of the road at the bottom, we have to consider the drawing carefully. So originally the photograph, okay, the road intersects this guideline in the middle. Let me do the guideline again. Okay, the road intersects that guideline in the middle and goes slightly over it. So here, the original guideline was here. So the drawing was slightly over it. So we begin at the end of our previous drawing, which is here, that point, and then just a shallow curve touching, uh, intersecting with this guideline, and then just going straight on until it reaches the end of the paper. Now on the other side, uh, it is quite similar, so it's just a curve going outwards from this point where we ended earlier. However, if we can, uh, if we've noticed here, the road ends here, so that means uh, our road will end slightly higher than the corner here. So, just like so, just like so, and then um, we just erase all the guidelines, uh, unnecessary guidelines, and we are ready to paint. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now the first thing I'm gonna do would be to paint the sky. I love painting the sky. It's very simple. It's probably the simplest uh, thing you can paint. So just what you do is just paint the whole thing with water. I mean the whole thing, uh, the whole area for the sky, not the, um, not the whole page. So the whole area for the sky, just paint it with water. There you go. And then we'll get some blue paint, dark blue paint. And then I'm gonna shape my sky. So I want my sky to look like that, oops. So where is that? So again, I want my sky to look like so, like that. Doesn't it look like a typical uh, sky to you? Yes, it does. So now more here and then okay. So now I just need to spread this paint a little bit. So I've just rinsed my brush. Okay, I'm spreading the paint for it to look more natural. And I think in some areas here on this um, area for the sky, I need more blue paint. So let me just add some more blue paint here. And maybe some more here. There we go. Lovely. So let me again rinse my brush and just spread it a little bit. Okay. Let me see if I'm happy with my sky. I'm not that happy with my sky, so I'm just going to add water and create more white areas here. So what I'm doing now is just lifting, lifting the excess paint. Okay. 
Okay, and I want to shape it again. Like so. And that's actually much better. I like it more with that white area there and the darker blue area over there. Oh, I don't want this line to show. So let me just brush that. Wonderful. And I'm now happy with my sky. Okay, now the next bit I am going to do would be to paint everything with light green except for the road. So I am going to paint everything with light green now. except for the road. Wonderful. Okay, so now I've painted the area I want to be light green. I am now going to get some light green paint. Okay, so there we go. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I can already feel the grass. I thoroughly enjoyed my holiday in uh, Devon and Cornwall, Cornwall mainly, because of the beautiful countryside. All the greenery and the mountains and all, it's just so beautiful. It just feels so good to be surrounded by nature. Oh, I think I missed something here. Yes. I, yes, this is also supposed to be light green. Oh, fantastic. That is beautiful. Yeah, and if there's some excess on the road, that's fine. Do not worry about it because there's grass growing on the roads as well. It's not like uh, the motorway. It's a... Uh, really a different experience. It's very nice. And I think camping in those areas would be great. Well, not during the winter, of course, but uh, during the summer months, I think it would be amazing to camp somewhere in Devon or Cornwall. Okay, so now I have my light green paint. Okay, again, remember we're doing an impressionist painting. We don't, we're not doing exactly the details, but we have to be, we have to be able to identify that it's the same landscape with the same road. Okay, so for this one, I will now apply burnt chenna. Oh, I'm sorry, not burnt chenna. Yellow ochre, my apologies. And then the yellow ochre would stand for the trees here. Oops. And of course the grass is here. And yes, if it um, bleeds in, that's okay. Do not worry. We can put the rest of the details in later. Yes, and remember the guideline over here, dividing these two areas. 
Okay, we paint the yellow ochre along there. Because if you can see, the grass are along that line, We're almost along that line. Okay, wow, we're doing very well. And then here as well. So I am going to draw a line here. Oops. In yellow ochre. And then, yes, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay because the trees are here. Okay, so more trees. And there we go. Lovely. We have uh, the areas in yellow ochre. Well, not all of it. Okay, now I'm going to paint some yellow ochre on the road. So along the road, there will be areas in yellow ochre. Okay, now this area is in yellow ochre. I'm going to paint the sides with just water, just to soften it. Because we will paint gray around it later on. Okay. <clears throat> so now the next bit would be dark green paint. And I will paint this area with dark green paint. Yes, and as you can see, I'm not painting it that way. I'm painting it in random directions. It's because we're creating some um, greenery, uh, shrubs, uh, grasses, okay? We don't paint it in just one direction. Okay, but if you can see it now, it's starting to have shape, okay? So now we will paint other green areas such as here. Okay, one more. And then here. And as you if you notice, it looks lighter now, the green, because it has mixed with the yellow ochre. And I'm just uh, painting this way to create something like lines uh, for the uh, direction of the branches. Uh, because originally in the image, there's some branches there. So I'm just creating some lines for that. And let me get some more dark green paint. I'm just going to drop some dark green here and here. And here. And also here. So we're actually now starting to put some layers of uh, dark green paint. Okay, here as you can see, I'm not uh, doing the same uh, brush strokes as I did because what I'm trying to do is just to spread the paint. And now I'm going to lift some of it, but in a certain direction, it's slanted. Okay, and now I am going to add more dark green paint uh, mixed with blue. So it would be even darker. 
and I will paint it in this area. So, and then in that direction again. Again, lifting some of the paint just to create that uh, foliage. Oh, beautiful. I love it. Okay, so now I'm going to get some more dark green paint, uh, which we, the one where we didn't uh, add the blue too. So just drops here okay and now I need to rinse my brush and just lift some of the colors And I'm lifting them in a manner that uh, creates certain shapes uh, that is with my brush perpendicular to the paper. Okay, so I rinse my brush again now sideways. Okay, depending on the direction of the brush, the effect would be different. So again, the tip. And I'm going to get some black paint, just a little bit. Then just, I'm just going to drop a little bit of black paint here. Just a few drops. Fantastic. Okay, now I'm just going to lift some of those black paint. Hold on one moment. Let me just add some more dark green before I lift it. Oh, fantastic. Now it's time to lift it. So it should have already stained the paper. And there would have been dark areas and dark green areas. Okay, fantastic. That is fantastic. Okay, now let me just soften this with water. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to work on the trees over here with some dark green paint, but just on one side of the trees. Okay, and then I'm going to lift some of the paint. Fabulous. Oh, yes. <coughs> and now I'm going to get some black paint. Just put some drops of black paint on it. Let it spread by itself. Do the same thing for the other one. Oh, fantastic. <coughs> that is lovely. 
Okay, now I'm just going to take a little bit of black paint. Oh no, I won't do it right now because if I do it, it's going to spread all over. So I'll do the trunk of the trees later on. Okay, for now, I will do the road. Oops. So I'm going to paint the lighter areas of the road with water. Like so. And then I will paint it with gray, which is diluted black paint. Okay. And this gray paint would climb up here to the rest of the road and climb down. Okay, fantastic, because for the road, I actually want to see the direction of, of the brush strokes. So it's to give it, um, it's to show the direction. Okay, let me just get the new kitchen towel to dry my brush. Okay, and then here I will paint the edge here as well, but here it will be thicker with continuous lines. even thicker as we go down here. Okay, wonderful. I am very happy with the output so far. Now I need to Paint these darker areas here. Okay, this will be um, because of the shadows on the leaves. So a little bit more here. And just to make it look more natural.
Mm, fantastic. We're doing very well and very quickly. So I might need to turn this around just to see what the, if this exactly I've already done on this uh, particular art piece and see what more we need to do. Turn it around. Oh, lovely. Oh, fantastic. This is looking really good. So now I just need some uh, dark brown or burnt umber here to line this bit here. And I also need that for the other side to line this bit here. Oh, fantastic. And uh, we would need some uh, burnt umber for this as well because we would need some plants here. Oh, I do think uh, I need to lighten the color a bit for, for mixing uh, yellow ochre. I already have a mixture of yellow ochre and the uh, burnt umber here. So for this area, this was used in my earlier class today. Mm. Okay, fantastic. That is fantastic. <laughs> I like this site. I'm very much satisfied with it already. Now I have yet to uh, put the trees, the trunks of the trees, yeah, like so. I'm putting them on now. So now I have the tree trunks. Okay, so let me just uh, put more paint here, like so. And then let me just put some dimensions in this area. So just like that. Again, it has to be perpendicular to the paper so that it can create those um, lines and other random shapes that at a distance would look more like leaves. And now strokes upwards so that it looks like uh, the grass are growing in that direction. Oh, fantastic, love me. Okay, now a bit of yellow ochre. On the same brush, so it's slightly darker. Okay, now I have to rinse it and really paint it with yellow ochre. Because now we are painting some uh, branches of uh, some uh, plants.
here. We need some hair flow. Probably a little bit here. How oh, fantastic, that's very nice. Lovely. I am very happy with the output. Let's just. Brush that a little bit. Let me turn it around, see how it is. Oh, it's fantastic. I am very satisfied with it. Okay, now I need some black paint to paint the hedge with. Yeah, it is black because of the shadow. Like so. And again, here we paint it with yellow ochre. Again, over what we have already painted previously. And then more yellow ochre here in this area. Oh, fantastic. Get some green paint. Oh, perfect. Now the roads. Okay. I need to turn this around so I can work on the road better. Ah, there's an area here. Okay. As you can see, this area here, okay, which should be darker. And that is, uh, okay, and that is because, okay, this area here. It's actually uh, supposed to be lower. So let me just zoom in. Okay, fantastic. Now, we do have to do some more finishing touches. Uh, for one, the rocks here would need uh, more details, okay? And we do that just by putting drops of uh, black paint, like we did earlier. And again, we let it stain the paper and then we lift it. So that's what we do there. And then for the other areas, so here, there is uh, supposed to be a shrub. So again, details, but again, it's just like a silhouette. We don't really put as much details on it. So there we go. And a very important thing that we have to bear in mind would be a uh, placement of uh, the shadows. Yes, because that would make the difference here in this particular art piece. So the shadows, as we can see here, would be 
going in this direction. So that would be, oh, but I have one here. But I have a long one here and another long one here. Again here, I have another one. And then on the road itself. So let me make it a little bit darker. Yes, now we use the brush sideways for this. Okay, so for this one, I need to do another layer longer. Like so. And here as well, a little bit of shadows here. Here. Again, this is just to create more dimension. Oh, by that, I mean the depth in the dimension, sorry. We're not really creating more dimensions, we're creating depth in the dimension. So from afar, it would look a little bit more 3D. Okay, now I'm still missing some characters here. Yes, the cows. So I need to draw the cows, paint the cows. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Before I do that, I'm going to lift some of the paint here. So just like a straight line. Those uh, paint that were not lifted along that line, that's okay. Again, another line close to that. And then There we go. Now, just for the cows. So I'm not really sure if we can paint them now, so we might uh, leave it for now. And, oh, again, I forgot the trunk for the trees, for this gigantic tree far away. Hmm. Okay, now we just need to lift some of the paint to make it look again more natural. Oh, fantastic. Okay, we're finished. I will not do the cows. Uh, I can do the branches if uh, that is what is preferred. Yeah, let's do a little bit of the branches. But again, this is just optional. Okay, so I'm just painting a little bit of the branches. And it's best to use a rigger uh, for this. I have a rigger with me, but most of um, um, the participants in this session don't have uh, riggers. So I will just use my round brush.
Okay, so that's finished. Okay, so this is our landscape, our impressionist version of this uh, Devon landscape without the cows. I think we did a very good job and I do hope you enjoyed the, doing the art piece during this session. So uh, for our seeding sessions, we will be uh, doing fauvism which is slightly similar to this, but um, with emphasis a little bit more on color rather than the source of light. So we'll do that next time. And again, I hope you enjoyed the session and I hope you do enjoy the succeeding sessions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.